Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Sir Strongman, also known as all these other aliases. For the past year now, I've been reviewing movies on a little-known website called Fine Junk, under the banner of Strong and Imagine, or SNI, Reviews. A few months ago, co-founder of SNI Reviews, Imagine Corp, also known as all these other aliases, proposed that we re-review the first movie ever reviewed, Hashtag Horror. While I was very much excited to do so, I felt that we needed to go bigger. And seeing how I've wanted to break in YouTube for a while now, it just seemed like the time was right. So everyone, sit back, relax, and enjoy the review. The film starts with a car in which two people are fucking. Trust me, these are the only two people that are going to be enjoying themselves this entire movie. The girl of the couple just gets out and leaves. Lady, it's like in the middle of a forest during a snowstorm, where the fuck are you going? Anyways, the guy gets a phone call and it's real days married. For some reason, despite knowing that he's cheating on her, the lady tries to get her husband to stay with her. Look, I may not be perfect, but I'm as perfect as you're gonna get. Like, why? Divorce his ass! Whatever, this is the least of our worries. So, after hanging up the phone, someone comes and murders the man, and... Nope. These don't help at all. The editing in this film is so goddamn annoying! It's not because of how obnoxiously colorful it is, that's just a cherry on top of the cake. The main problem with the editing is because of how fucking rapid it is. Plus, it just seems to come out of nowhere, so we get normal shots, and then suddenly it's all jump cut, bright colors, blah, blah, blah! <sighs> Anyways. We then cut to this scene. It wasn't built, it's not real. Alright, well that scene was pointless. We cut to the same girl, now in a car with her mom, just kinda having general small talk, establishing that she's going to a sleepover with some friends at the house this guy lived in. This is his daughter. She does nothing the entire movie. Then... This happens. What the hell? Uh... Play the next scene. Why did you invite her? We don't even know her. And we don't even like her. Yeah, and she smells weird. It's just her breath. Maybe she's allergic to dairy. We'll just give her some gum. Okay, Sophia, but answer the question. Why did you invite that new weird girl to our party? Wow, that's harsh. At this point, I'd just leave. They clearly don't want you, but nah, she stays. Fake is better. Ah, uh, yes, these are 12 year olds that smoke and have smoked long enough to know the difference between fake and real cigarettes, Jesus Christ. Alright, you know what? This could be reasonable. I was a fucking loser at 12 years old, so I'm not really that good of a basis for this, so maybe 12 year olds do smoke nowadays, but I doubt it. Anyways, then we get possibly the most drawn out scene of the movie. The whole point of the scene is simple. Establish that this one girl, Kat, is going to a sleepover and that she almost got expelled from her school. The problem is that they keep saying the same fucking thing over and over and over! You just don't get how, it! How, I, oh, I, okay. I accept that. I don't get it. So make me get it. Shut up! Anyways, so this scene carries on to another scene where this girl is being a huge brat, and then there's this random, very obvious cut. Stop! Just, just don't do it. Don't do it for five minutes, okay? FIVE MINUTES! That's just sloppy. Anyway, she gets out of the car, and as she gets out, we see a mysterious figure following behind her, stalking her. I want you guys to remember this scene, okay? Alright. Anyways, the film goes on to confuse me more by talking about the fucking four winds converging to make a vortex or some shit. Supposedly she tapped into the this is the place where the vortex of the four winds converge. <laughs> I mean, it's just so abrupt it comes out of nowhere. What the fuck are the four winds? And why do we even need to hear about them? She also talks about some art guy who killed people, but like, are we supposed to assume the Four Winds made him do it? Is that what the Four Winds do? I did some research, the only thing that came up was something about how Greek gods are related to the seasons and something about the Bible. That was just something a guy saw once when God manifested his powers on Earth. Like, what the fuck are the Four Winds? I know I'm harping on this, but it just seriously confuses me. I want an answer, damn it. Anyways, got off track there. We then get this annoying montage of the girls doing girl things, and we get some lesbian jokes from 12 year olds. Very sexy. <laughs> I totally make out with you on that. <laughs> Ew. The mom walks in on them doing their little fashion show and tells them she's gonna go away for an hour and a half. Remember that, folks. An hour and a half. And then we get another annoying montage! Fuck's sake! Well, okay, at least this one partially is in service to the plot. We establish that there's a gun here. Now, do you prefer I don't run the faucet so everyone can hear me taking a dump?
Ew. Well, after being a total bitch to everyone, it's time for this fat girl to get her comeuppance. There's so much jiggly fat! How can you be this fat at only 12? I mean, where is his head? Except not, because despite this cat girl making a valid point... Are you kidding me? You were just bullying her and telling her she had to go to Soul Cycle. Everyone hates her, so they kick her out, and next thing we know, she's running outside and crying about how she can't see anything. I can't even see it right now! Even though it's broad daylight, and it's not snowing that hard, and they never established her having vision problems before, so she's just a liar. We also see a stalker come back, and I guess make this picture of the fat girl? Well, it upsets the fat girl, and now we're supposed to feel sorry for her?! You can't stop eating. I'm sorry, no. You can't make characters act like absolute bitches multiple times in the movie and then suddenly try and make us feel sympathetic for them by throwing in the fact they have an eating disorder. Yeah, that sucks. That doesn't excuse them for being a total fucking twerp. Sorry, I feel like I've been saying bitch too much. Well, anyways, they decided to do the smart thing when getting cyberbullied. Put the fucking phones down. But instead of doing that, they put them in a safe because I guess they just can't trust themselves. Anyways, after throwing the key in the pool, again, why? Whatever. We got our girls drinking liquor and <laughs> dancing. And then they go into a tent that's here for some reason. Is this a rich person thing? I'm just gonna say this is a rich person thing. And inside the tent lies the most uncomfortable scene of the movie. I felt like he was cleaning my teeth. Ew. When'd you get your period? Yeah! What is this movie being so gross? I don't wanna hear about 12 year old girls making out with boys, 12 year olds getting their periods, 12 year old shit. You know, did it. What the fuck did she just say? You know, did it. Oh, uh, okay, um, so after that, they do this weird masked accident. Why are there so many non sequiturs in this movie? <laughs> Anyways, this trippy little scene gets interrupted when the father of Cat you know, the girl got kicked out earlier, comes storming in and just makes a scene of himself. Where's Cat? Where? Cat! Where is she? Leave with Bennett. No, you sure? You sure? Cat! <laughs> and it just goes on and on and on. The actor is really into this role. I mean, most of the actors in this film are kind of mediocre at best, but this guy is seriously trying. It gets to the point where a man pulls out a knife and starts threatening the girls. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? This is a criminal offense now. Reasonably, the sex girl runs outside while another girl just flees deeper into the house. After doing his threatening, the dad then runs outside also. Jesus Christ, what the fuck was that all about? They're so obviously trying to make us think this guy's the killer, but it just kind of loops around to him being clearly not the killer. Oh right, there's a killer in this movie, isn't there? Well, lucky for us, Sex Girl comes across the butchered remains of the man and woman from earlier in the movie. Reasonably freaked out now, she runs back in the house, tells girls what she found, and then this happens. I just saw a car in the woods and the windows are all bloody, I don't know what to do. It's a red Ferrari. That's my dad's car, you're lying again! What? O okay, so... It's the same car as your dad, so what? Yes, it's an expensive looking car, but this is supposed to be a rich neighborhood. And even then, the car could be from outside the neighborhood. So why does that mean that she's lying? You're seriously such an idiot, you think your dad's the only man in the world to have that specific type of car? Why are you, a fucking child? Oh, well, I guess you technically are, but that's still no excuse. That's it. You have to go. And now after getting the shit scared out of them for kicking someone out, you're gonna do it again? What the fuck? Well, I guess they don't really kick her out, she just kind of runs deeper into the house. Anyway, so this girl decides to go out and look for Cat, well these two don't really do anything because they're terrible people. Apparently someone's gone missing, but you could have fooled me. So we get another scene of the father. You, you are much more of a fucking nightmare than you've ever been. You just turn out to be a fucking complete useless fucking human being. And if I were you, I would just kill myself. We see these two talking about how it could have been the painter's ghost, but that's obviously not the killer, so what's the fucking point of even bringing it up in the script? We then cut back to Dad, who... Cat! Kitty, kitty, cat! Come on, I got some soup and a sandwich for you! We'll go to Peterson's, come on! Hey, I'm right here! Come on, bitches! Come on down here! We're gonna build a trap! Yeah. We're gonna build a trap! Oh 
my god, what are you talking about? How are you gonna make a trap? Anyways, the rich girl finds the car her dad is in, freaks out, tries to call her mom, but then this happens. Listen, Harry, I don't care that you're fucking your art advisor. I do care that you're calling me right after. I don't want to hear from you ever again. Do you understand me? I'm through with you. Goodbye. Then Mitch girl leaves the phone and goes take a... What? No! Look, I know this is a moment of high stress. Where the fuck is she going? You have a working cell phone and two dead bodies. One of them is your father. Call 911. <sighs> Whatever. So she takes the gun and runs back to the house, I guess. And we get the fucking shortest sunset ever. Wait a second, it was like noon earlier, and now it's suddenly pitch black night? In the span of less than an hour and a half? No! That's not how time works! Anyways, so sex girls in the basement. Oh my god, one of the girls is murdered and I don't care. She then gets attacked and somehow these two girls see it happen? I mean, alright. What, is the murderer live streaming this? Then these two girls have a falling out and the non-fat one runs outside. Meanwhile, the rich girl bumps into Kat's dad and then a chase happens. Meanwhile, again, the sex girl decides to get the key from the pool and get their phones to call 911. However, she's about to get drowned. Luckily, this rando appears at the window, taps on the glass, and then manages to scare off the murderer. Also, this happens. <laughs> wow. What a dick. Anyway, Sex Girl gets into a safe and starts looking into her phones. At the same time, Fat Girl gets killed. Oh, thank God I hated her most. Suddenly, Sex Girl is attacked again, but she managed to lock herself in the safe until the murderer leaves. And then she goes and kills this girl. She stabs her a bunch and then drags her into a tennis court. For some reason, she wakes up despite being knocked unconscious due to all the stabbings, I think. How else would she have gotten there? But anyways, she wakes up and starts bleeding all over the place. And I can tell this is trying to be uncomfortable, but it's just annoying. After that, Sex Girl leaves her safe and finds Fat Girl dead. Then, out of nowhere, the dad runs in and explains everything. So it turns out he was the mysterious stranger watching Cat and the rest of them, because he knows Cat is mentally unstable and that she could be a killer. Wait a second. Wait a sec- If you were watching them the entire time, why the fuck didn't you do anything when your daughter ran out? You cared about her enough to threaten these children with a knife, and yet you let it happen? Wait a second, how the fuck was the mysterious stranger watching Kat leave the car while her dad drove away if those two people are the same person? <sighs> Alright, we're almost at the end here, guys. Let's, let's just hold out. So, since he was threatening them with a knife, Rich Girl makes the rational decision that he's the murderer and shoots the dad. This drives Kat into even more of a frenzy, except not, because she just takes off her mask and runs off into the woods. Sex Girl says this line. It's never gonna be okay ever. Like, why do you say that? I mean, it's, it's true, but... Whatever. She takes the gun and runs after Cat to finish the job, I guess. We then get a classic Mexican standoff, and Rich Girl's mom is finally returning. And just as the mom gets close enough to see what's going on, Cat turns the gun on herself, shoots herself, and we get the ending of the movie. The images were followed and liked by millions of people who stood by and did nothing. Wait, wait, what? Millions watched? The fuck are you talking about? Wait a second. Well, is Terrible Transition supposed to be some kind of an app? Hey, wait a second! Why are you watching this little girl suddenly? What, is this supposed to be social commentary now? And I'll have the best avatar with the most likes, and I'll have the top score, and I'll be the top player. What?! Wait a second, what, was that supposed to be her motive? To be very popular on this live streaming app? I thought it was supposed to be that she was fucking mentally unstable and she got bitched out by everyone. Jeez, TikTok is more dangerous than I thought. Anyways, that's the end, and oh my god, what a fucking train wreck of a movie. Nothing in this movie works, except for the cinematography, that's competently done. But everything else fails. All these characters in this movie are extremely hateable. The only one who I don't hate is the sex girl, but not hating something is different from liking something. It also randomly decides that it wants to be all artsy, but falls flat on its face in trying to do anything. This isn't an art film, this is a fart film. Okay, I'm sorry, that was bad. Do not watch this movie. It'd be better used as a torture device than an actual piece of art. Well, this has been my first video. I hope you guys didn't hate it. If you want to read the text version of this review, a link will be provided in the description. See you guys next week.